Hi, I'm Andrew Pachochnik. I'm back at TimberCon. Today I'm going to be um, having a bit of a play. Well, it's not really a good word to use because these are not toys, they're serious tools. Spiralling tools. And you may ask what spiralling tools might be used for. In essence, they're to uh, tools that put decorations on your work. Now you can use them a number of different ways. You can either cut what looks to be something like a thread, or it can be a texture, or it can be a really decorative spiral that animates out of the centre of a piece of wood. There are two kits available in the Crown spiralling range. There's the large tool, which is this one, and there's the mini tool, which is a much smaller one. They consist of a series of cutters. In the large kit, you get two spiralling tools or two spiralling cutters, one of 18 TPI, the other one of 32 TPI or teeth per inch, and this one which is a texturing tool. As you can see, there's a ball bearing in the middle and the tool spins around. There's also this sleeve here which has a flat surface underneath and it can be set up so that it rests on the tool rest and you can set the angle of the cutter simply by locking these two Allen, uh, grub screws. The smaller tool consists of a smaller wheel. In fact, there are two in the kit. There's one that's 17 TPI and the other one is 27 TPI. Now the thing is that the finer the teeth are, or the more teeth that there are on the cutter, the finer the pattern it will produce. In this particular case, you've got this knurling knob that you release and you simply place the cutter inside the tool, tighten that up, and the tool is ready to go. Again, you've got this adjustable sleeve so that if you need to, you can set the angle of the cutter to wherever you wish it to be for the, so you can repeat patterns and then just lock it into place and you're ready to go. Okay, here are a couple of samples that I've made previously just to show you some of the possibilities that you can achieve using the spiraling tool. Here you can see this is almost the equivalent of a thread and it was cut using the very coarse wheel. And what happens is after a number of passes, the depth of the cut becomes deeper and deeper and deeper until you achieve almost a spiral or a thread. Here I've done a bit of knurling, which is running the tool in one direction and then back in the other direction. So you get a crossed over spiral and just a finer spiral here. When you're working with end grain, you can create a number of different patterns. Again, the spiraling ones. And here are a couple of diff different samples that I prepared. Um, I didn't have anything in particular in mind when I made these. They were just purely experimental. But how can you apply these to your work? Well, it's quite easy, if you want to, to apply this to the lid of a box. It could be applied to a uh, plate or something similar. And you can see that by experimenting with different breaks in the form and different texturing speeds, how you can get a variety of different effects, which really come up well when there's a side light cast on it. Alternatively, here's a little piece that I whipped up yesterday where I've made this little wall piece using the spiralling tool in here. This part here I burnt first and then used the texturing tool to remove some of the burnt surface. This part is sanded smooth. This was just done with the spiralling tool, just this one here, just running out from the centre and then I just rubbed some grey lead over it to pick up the high spots and highlight the pattern that's there. Alright, enough talk about uh, the various op uh, patterns that you can produce. Let's have a look at how they work. Now, there are two ways you can use this tool. I actually quite like loosening this sleeve so that I can then simply rotate the tool to the angle that I want as I'm working. The other thing that you need to also keep in mind is the speed of your lathe that's going to influence the type of pattern that you produce. Around 500 RPM is pretty good. Either side by about 200 RPM is fine, but you will need to experiment. And keep in mind, the larger the area you're working on, the faster the surface speed will actually be. To set up, all that I do is I pull back the tool rest so that I have a bit of space so that the wheel can rotate freely. 
In the case of this one, you need to be aware that this wheel, this knob may unscrew itself if you run the tool anti-clockwise. So either run it clockwise or when you're rotating it to an anti-clockwise position, maybe just hold that the knurling with your finger so it doesn't unscrew. Alright, when you use this tool, I'll first show you how to use it with this sleeve locked in position so we get a consistent angle. So let's get the eyes covered up. The tool rest needs to be far enough back from the work so that the support can sit flat on the tool rest and then you can just simply bring the wheel into contact with the wood. So let's get the lathe started and let's see what the result will be. And now let's see what we have once the lathe has been switched off and there we are. When using this tool I like to sometimes release the sleeve so that instead of the sleeve being in contact with the tool rest I just loosen the two scrub screws, pull the sleeve right back, just lock it into place. That also means that I can bring the tool rest in closer to the work. So do that but I still need to keep enough clearance so this wheel will rotate freely. Just check that knob to see that the, that's all tight and that I've got plenty of clearance and let's see how things go. I'll do a couple of different passes so you can see what happens when I roll the tool over in different directions and on different angles. So I'll start off with what's probably the most common way, the tool pointing it to about two o'clock and what is cut it pointing to about two o'clock and working out from the center. Then I'll do a little band where I've turned the tool over to the right and we'll see what that achieves. And now for the final band, I'll roll the tool right over so that it's just short of vertical. The other thing that I also like to do is to use something like this three-pointed tool to cut a little border on each side of those three bands. So let's do that and then we'll have a look at what the whole thing looks like. This little tool works similarly to a skew, but um, doesn't doesn't have the chance of catching and I just run another border in here and that will just visually capture each of those bands of patterns. Let's have a look at how this looks now. If you want to highlight these patterns what you can do in some cases is just something like a graphite pencil or a felt tip pen and that also introduces the option of colour. Just rub the, the pencil over the spirals and that will then pick up the high spots and will highlight the pattern that you've produced. Let's see what it looks like. And there we are. Up until now I've been using the little spiralling tool with fine teeth. Let's have a look now at what happens when we go to this big wheel and the larger teeth. It's actually a texturing tool but it can still spiral. So I'll, set, I'll give it a shot on here and we'll see what the result is. I'll keep it locked in position with this sleeve and that will use the tool on an angle. This is probably about two o'clock, half past two-ish. And we'll see what that does. And then I'll release the sleeve and just have the tool going vertically and see what the result is there. Right, a rather large aggressive spiral. Let's see if I go over it again, what will happen.
it's actually deepened it and made it more obvious. But now let's loosen the sleeve and I will use the wheel vertically and in theory this should give me a stippled effect. So I'll bring the tool rest in closer, make sure I have plenty of clearance for the wheel, start the lathe and let's go. And I've simply just gone left to right, right to left, left to right. And there we have our stippled effect, which I can now highlight just with a pencil and we'll see just how that shows up. There we are. And I might even create a border using my three point tool. And there we have it, a spotted surface. Now that we've had a look at how spiraling and texturing tools can be used on end grain, here's a bowl that I've turned where I use the spiraling tool on the side grain. So I've turned out the centre part of the bowl as you do with a normal bowl and then I simply ran the spiraling tool across the surface and then I rubbed some black dye into the wood and then just lightly sanded the high spots so you get the pattern showing up quite nicely and then on the underside I did something similar and you can see the spiral pattern showing up there. Then a friend of mine who's a very very experienced exponent of the spiraling tool made this little container for me and you can see he's cut a really nice fine spiral in the lid. He used the texturing tool to cut a, a decorative band around the collar there and this also has a screw on lid. Inside the lid he's inserted a nice little spiral extra piece and then chased the thread into the wood and we'll be doing a video on chasing threads in the very near future so stay tuned for that. Okay so today I've just shown you a couple of the little results that you can achieve using the crown spiraling and texturing toolkits. There are so many different things you can achieve. You can use colour, you can use the colour of your timber, you can use all sorts of things that is only limited or that are only limited by your imagination. So as usual these tools are available from TimberCon either here in Reservoir or in Perth and at their website www.timbercon.com.au